or do you even believe that the benefits of the pill have outweighed the costs? Um, I don't know that I believe that. I don't, I mean, honestly, I think that this is one of those things where we can't make, I don't think that I can make a blanket statement about that for everyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. To me, that's a blank, that's an individual level um, decision. Choice. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, like, that, so for, okay. me, for me, right, um, using uh, birth control for the number of years that I did, absolutely the benefits outweighed the costs because of how I played things. Um, I mean, it allowed me to get my degrees and, you know, start my research lab and I had my kids when I wanted to. How many to. kids do you have? I have two. I have a, I have a daughter. Was that enough? And a son. Yeah, I was I was done. That okay, was, okay. I, I, okay. That so was that was good up. for you. I was comfortable with that. Yeah. I felt good about that. Um, so right, for, so you managed all that. I did. And, and and I think that there are many women who do. There are some women who don't. And so I think that the the question of whether or not the costs outweigh the benefits something that's best answered at the individual basis, which is why I think the best thing that we can do for people is to educate them about what the trade-offs are that you're making and what the risks and benefits are. Because like you said, I mean, I think that there is a... You know, w women are taught almost nothing about their fertility, like nothing. Well, and they're I'll taught have, lies. Well, yeah. I mean, I have women coming into my class talking about how so and so had a baby at forty. Yeah, and I'm yeah, saying yeah. to my, I'm saying to, like, no, like here's the here's the fertility curve. Tell like, me, describe the fertility. Curve. The fertility curve peaks at twenty five. And then it begins to decline. So women are at their most fertile at 25 years of age, and then it begins to decline. It declines very precipitously after 35. And um, and the probability of getting pregnant um, from a general act of sex is much, much lower than it is when you're in your 20s. And this is really hard thing for women to have a wrestle with because That's of course, for sure. I mean, you know, I look at myself and I had to, you know, I was in graduate school when I had my first child and I had to make the decision Am I going to, um, you know, incur the cost to my career to go ahead and, um, and and try to have a baby now when I know that it'll be relatively easy How old for are you? biology? Um, 28. Right, um, right. So you yeah. were already, by historical standards, uh, but old. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, um, but I wanted to go ahead and get... I Why did you take the risk? I took the risk because I study women's fertility. Okay, so you knew. <laughs> and it's like, so I know. I know exactly what's going to happen if um, if I wait. And I, I wasn't, that wasn't a chance that I wanted to take. And I think that if we do things like educate women on what the costs are that, that they're, you know, sort of facing, if they choose to restrict their fertility for all of these years, like what is okay, the outcome? So First of, of all, they should at least know what the facts are. Yeah, I don't okay. think that they, I don't think that we're educating Not women at all. about no, these things. No, we like we. There's no one who's lied to more than 19-year-old women. 